Hi folks, back in 2017 when I started Heritage Flight Simulation it was always because of the virtual reality and the potential around virtual reality and wanting to have augmented reality where I could sit in a real cockpit of a Spitfire and fly it in a virtual world. And we've pretty much achieved that with the Heritage Flight Simulation cockpit, which, as, as you'll have seen from various other videos, has um, come out very nicely. And we've sold 65 or so licenses over the years. So our cockpit has provided people with a means of building their own uh, Spitfire and experiencing what it's like to fly in a Spitfire, which Let's face it, very few of us will ever do in real life. Our next step was to work with a developer of simulator aircraft and make sure that what was in the model was exactly what we had in our aircraft, which was exactly the same as the original aircraft. And if you look at the DCS World Spitfire, it's just the way that people put these things together, that the artists and so on work on them. And while it's a pretty good rendition, it's not an exact one-to-one -one scale copy of the Spitfire. And everything is not positioned exactly where it is in real life. So I then approached Flying Iron Simulations, um, who were just starting out in Australia and they had done for X-Plane, they had done a Thunderbolt and it was pretty good. I approached a couple of people actually, uh, developers, to assist me with porting the 3D model into a flight simulation model. Um, and Alex and Dan um, took up the challenge which was great and they have done a superb job as you will be familiar with first in X-Plane and then later in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and of course that will go into Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 as well which is very exciting. One of the things that was still lacking and, and that many people commented on um, that they would like to see is being able to see their hands in the cockpit working the, the controls um, and admittedly that was not available until we had virtual reality with pass-through. Now the pass-through has developed significantly as well um, and you will have seen a previous video which I did which had a small little portal essentially that you're looking through um, and gave you a sense of being there but it was always having to adjust that um, as, as a knee board essentially you could make it a bit bigger but it wasn't that great. I mean it was good but it wasn't quite what I wanted yet. So I then approached Alex at uh, Flying Iron Simulations and said look is there any way that we can make the cockpit itself pass through except for the instrument panel which I wanted to retain as being the instrument panel within the virtual world. Um, I did try and uh, do some graphics on the interior, modified some graphics on the interior um, and I could see that there was a potential, as could Alex. So we then decided, yes, we would do it, or Alex decided he would do it, which was great. Um, and he has come back and I've been testing this for a while now. and. I think the result is great. Look, you still get a bit of bleed through around the edges um, of the pinkish purple color that is associated with the pass through. Uh, but I must say when I'm flying, that sort of disappears. So it's, 
it's there, but it's not like you focused on it. Um, I find it's enriched it quite a bit. And I think as these things develop um, and, and the pass through develops further and as I work further with Alex, they're pretty busy at the moment, as you can imagine. So, um, but, but I would like to ultimately have very little of that pinkish color, but it's amazing. And I'm very happy to be able to share that with you today. Right, so here we are in the cockpit and we're at a little airfield called Fussen and in Germany or in Austria, not too sure, but lovely little airfield. And let's have a look inside the cockpit. And here you can see my pass through shows the whole cockpit, but the actual panel is the virtual panel. So all the instruments will be working on the virtual panel. Um, fit is pretty good. I had to set the um, world scale to 125 in Microsoft Flight Simulator settings. Um, so that gives a pretty accurate look at the cockpit. Now, the really cool thing here is that if I get out of the cockpit, and you've got to do that carefully, because you don't want to fall, but here we step out, and I can look around, which is nice. Now I'm stepping out onto the wing, and we have the cockpit. Yes, there's still a bit of bleed through on the back there, on the pink, and also if you look through the glass, but if you look through this side, then you see the cockpit in its entirety in a virtual world. And in fact, if you're careful enough, you can walk right around the aircraft. Let's just get down here, have a look around. You can see the real cockpit inside the virtual cockpit. And there's the wing. And, well, I can walk around here a bit. Down to this side. And there's the cockpit over there with the door open. And what a lovely day. All right. Well, I think uh, let's get it up into the air and see what that looks like. I'm going to step back into the cockpit. There we go. And everything's still very well lined up. So, let's close the door. Well, that's the real door closed. Need to play catch up with the virtual door. There we go. Whoops. Let's open. That's closed and now to latch it there we go all right so let's do the startup so we'll put the fuel valve on and put some power on the system Lights come on on the panel, little red light shining there, uh, showing the fuel pressure is low. So we can cycle the wobble pump until the fuel pressure light goes off. There, that's sufficient. And let's open there. Let's prime. I'm just going to close the mixture for now while we do the priming. So it's a fairly coolish day out here. I'm going to give it about eight primes, I think. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and lock. And you can open the starter button and boost button, switch on magnetos. Mixture on, fuel pump is off, crack the throttle, brake is set. into the virtual world, which is, quite frankly, stunning. Okay, which way does this runway run? I think we're about in the middle. Close up. Covers there. Fuel pressure low again. We're going to set the fuel pump on. Got 60 degrees on the uh, water temperature. Start moving. Ah, brakes on, still on. Switch the brakes off. a bit setting full right on rudder trim and a little bit down one notch down on the nose trim and we are ready to go
Jackson. down and we'll just go back for a landing There's some power lines here that's a bit awkward Very awkward. Finest moment, but you get the idea. And that's all I wanted to show you today. And there we go. I can open the door and Open the virtual door. And there we are. Quite amazing. <laughs>